and they were making of accents, making really racist jokes. That has always been something I had to deal with because I felt like I had to make people so much money for them to overlook the fact that I was young and the color of my skin and um, just know my ethnicity and, ethnicity and all that. The GenTech Podcast discussing business, investing, and marketing. How's it going, guys? Welcome to GenTech's podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. He's in more or less every industry you want to be in today. He's in the marketing world. He's in the yacht world. He's in the party world. Honestly, we should all get an invite from this man right here. Um, I just want to give a warm welcome to Chihu. Um, and thank you so much for being on the podcast, my man. Thanks for having me. Pleasure is all mine. Absolutely. So just to give you guys a quick recap. So he's the CEO of a Grow with Chihu, correct? And then you yeah. also have what it's like to party. Great name, by the way. Yeah. And uh, you're also a yacht connoisseur. What a what a prestigious um, thing to be. Uh, it, it's 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 not bad. <laughs> I love that. So um, obviously, you guys know the the general breakdown of our podcast. Um, again, we have Chihu here. We have about 30, 35 minutes with him, and then we're gonna actually go into his background, trying to get you guys as much value as possible because obviously our audience is uh, business owners or people who are aspiring to become business owners. And obviously coming from someone who has had success in business, anything we can share to an audience to maybe even change one life is kind of our goal with this podcast. So Chihu, I'm just going to start it off. Um, where are you originally from? Um, I was born in Nigeria. Okay. And then what brought you over um, to America? I saw, did you start going to school here? <laughs> Um, when I was young, guys, I used to say bad decisions, <laughs> <laughs> but now those decisions aren't so bad after all. Um, so just know, I'm just gonna give like a quick recap. You know, born in Nigeria, um, went to like a British prep boarding school, right? And um, I used to be somewhat smart, so I got to skip a couple couple grades, and um, I was done with high school by like fifteen. Um, and then I wanted to go as far away from my parents as possible. <laughs> so I, 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 I then moved to um, the US alone at 16. I wow. started um, college. And I was done with college by about 20. Went in for master's degree in economics. After like a year, I felt like I got what I needed. Hopped out of that, dipped. And then um, I, I actually lived in New York for about nine years. And then I um, worked at couple marketing agencies um did a couple projects here and there just kind of you know really focused on honing building who i was as a person in terms of marketable skills right because you know i like saying you know first get really good at something then monetize so before i was 25 i just really focused on getting really 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 good at of this and good at literally i'll take jobs that paid nothing if i felt like there was something i could learn from that job and then once I felt like I had enough skills and I could actually, you know, um, compete in the world of business, I moved down to Florida um, to start my own business. Interesting. How is it moving to a new country at 16 years old? What were your struggles with that or experience? It was, it was, um, it wasn't as bad as you would assume. Just for context, I was in boarding school from when I was eight. Right. Mm -hmm. So I already had like that first rough um cheering away from like being alone. Right. So pretty much I like to say I've been alone since I was eight. Because when you bought like the first day of boarding school, I cried. <laughs> you know, I, I got I got to school two weeks late. Um, so all the kids already had like their dorms and all that. So I got put in the dorm so with like you no know, high school students. So like you no, know, I was in an eight year old in the dorm with 18 year olds, and you know, they decided to you know mess with me. And you know, they told me they just you know really came the crack the knuckles came up to me like like a movie right the crack the knuckles came up to me they're like yeah i'm taking all your you know your launch for the next like month and i just look up and i'm like why would my parents send me here oh. so, that's really but no I, I cried the first night and that was i only cried twice in boarding school the very first night and in um ninth grade when um i was told that if i um could get all my work done early, I would go home two months early. 
right? And I did that, and they said, no, I couldn't go home. And I just I cried because I really wanted to go home so much early for summer. But, you know, it's really, it's made me get very um, independent very quickly. So that's why, you know, like when I got done with high school at 15, my dad still felt I was too young to move to the U.S. for college. Mm -hmm. So he made me take one year off travel. But when I was 16, I had traveled alone. I had been born since I was eight, you know. So it was just kind of, you know, moving over here and kind of getting, I was very good at adapting to different cultures because I've lived, I've visited a lot of countries, seen a lot of cultures. Mm -hmm. And um, the, one of the first, a couple of things like threw me off, right? Um, initially, Americans talked too fast for me. So it was very, very hard for me to understand their accents because um, I grew up watching Hollywood movies. Those are the only Americans I knew, right? And British mm -hmm. people speak a lot different from Americans. Mm -hmm. And you know, I also as Nigerians, Africans, everyone speaks a lot different. So it took me a while to get used to, the, used to the American accents and also like American culture. But then I was in college, so I just kind of you know, enjoying being a college student at that point. Yeah, and you said you skipped grades, so you were already, always really studious. Um, I wouldn't say I was studious. <laughs> just that. Like, it's one of those things, you know, when they say um, talent beats hard work, unless talent beats hard work, except when you know, talent works hard, right? So when I was younger, it was easy to just kind of, you know, skate by on just sheer, you know, I picked things up very easily. I like to say my superpower is ability to learn, um, which hit me hard in grad school when I couldn't just pick things up by being there, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, when I was young, I, I just, I learned things rather um, quickly. So it was less that I worked too hard and more that I got lucky with genes. Mm -hmm. What were your interests when you um, were in college? I read something about your YouTube and streaming career. I thought that was super interesting. Oh, wow. You really did do your research. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I got into marketing uh, because I got into YouTube, right? Back in 20, 2010. It's, so in 2010, I used to play video games. And I got really good at a certain video game. And I was kind of... Um, I was kind of semi-pro. I don't know if you're aware of like you not know, the professional video game space. I was semi-pro, and um, I I grew like a small celebrity in you know that space, right? That's why my my Twitter handle used to say I used to be kind of famous. You know, mm -hmm. I, like, I mean, like I had like you no know, three, four, five thousand people online who you know watch my games and everything, right? And so when that game started to die out. I decided to leverage, you know, that kind of attention I had into um, other games, right? Mm -hmm. And then created a YouTube channel. Now, in, in trying to grow a YouTube channel, I had to get really good at, you know, the whole digital marketing space, right? Um, at this point in time, my, um, I you know I was in college. I couldn't work because I was not American, right? So I need to figure out ways to make money. And one of the first ways, I am actually a friend of mine, who um huge inspiration, right? And till this day is still one of the most influential people in my life, right? He chose to just drop out and not go to college altogether and just start his own marketing agency. Right. Mm -hmm. So he, he didn't you know bother the whole college situation, just went straight to what he was doing. And um he came up with this idea that we can grow um Facebook pages. Right. So what we used to do, we would grow Facebook pages. So let's say, you know, you create like a Lionel Messi Facebook fan page. Right. Back then, everyone who followed your page saw what you posted on it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you had 500,000 followers, 500,000 people saw the posts. That was before like ads or anything. So everyone saw what you posted. So we could grow like a Lionel Messi soccer page and then sell that page to like a brand that made soccer cleats. Right. Mm -hmm. Now they know everyone who sees that is going to see. So it's kind of the way we could create ads back then, right? So we should use the Facebook pages and sell it. Now um, we came to a problem is that we got scammed a few times because of a collection payments through PayPal and mm -hmm. like chargebacks. And I can tell you the more PayPal accounts that I have like <laughs> lost to limbo because mm -hmm. I got like a couple of chargebacks at once, right? And we just realized this is not a feasible business model. Like people could just literally just come, take the page pay and pretty much once you give someone the page, you can't get it back. 
and once PayPal charges you back, you can't show PayPal what you sold as it wasn't like packaged like doing like digital goods. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of my first venture into you know business on you know whatnot. And then you know I just kind of really focused on building up my YouTube channel and all that. Um, but then I kind of grew older by the time I was done with college. I um, so I went to like I used to go to like back back then. Just went switch was Justin TV. And they saw like, I don't know if anyone here remembers like old school Twitch have like those old school Twitch parties at um at like Pax Prime or you no know, Pax San Antonio, I don't know Pax like a big like um electronic convention, right? And back then I used to hang out with a lot of people who now are households, you know, names like you no know, Markiplier, KSI, you no know, mm-hmm. PewDiePie, Calcep. Right, you know, these are, so we talk about, back then they weren't that big. Back then, no one had a million followers. That did not exist, right? We we're just like a very small. But it didn't fit my personality to, you know, I to get online every day, play video game, really pretend like you're enjoying it every single time because you always have to be, you know, high energy. You know, sometimes I just want to chill and vibe and not worry about numbers. But I found out that I really liked the digital marketing side of st- stuff, right? So I just decided, okay, um, I always knew I was gonna go into marketing. That's kind of you know, dictated what I chose to study in college, it dictated the kind of like my general path. I always knew marketing was kind of you know, what I liked. And I, because of, I used to watch Mad Men and um, big, fan, big fan of the show, and I just kind mm-hmm. of wanted that to be my future. Right, I wanted like Mad Men, that whole you know, walk in, pitch a client, you no know, try. I wanted that to be my future. So that's kind of you no, know, um, what then people did into the marketing and you know, working for marketing agencies and just kind of honing my skills in marketing. Yeah, I think that is such an interesting story of what drew you to the field and also the fact that you were like so ahead of the streaming curve. Now Twitch is like everything. So yeah. um, the fact that you were doing that years ago is really impressive and that that's the thing that drew you to marketing. Um, so how did you decide to then start your own business? Did you have any mentors? Was Were you consider your friend that started his marketing business a mentor? Um, it's twofold. First of all, is I'm a terrible employee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a terrible employee. Okay. Um, you could probably find I only had like one job that I stayed on for more than a year, mm-hmm. right? Which which was one of my first real jobs. I stayed on for like you know two, three years. And that was because of um the boss then kind of saw myself, saw me in himself. And just kind of like want to come mentor me, and so he allowed me to get away with a lot of stuff that I would fire me for, right? So that was kind of you know I'm a terrible employee. I don't do well with you no know, authority, and that stems from the fact that I always felt like I was, I could do the job better than whoever my boss was, or whatnot, right? So it's always I always kind of knew once I felt confident in my ability to actually run the business, I would go off and give that a try um myself so it's always kind of no and then i just i had like a job that lasts like two three weeks where i got fired but till this day i have no idea (laughs) no clue Mm -hmm. i have to this day no clue like i i I occasionally want to message the lady on linkedin i'm like hey it's been six years will you tell me what happened still think (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I still t- I have no idea. Like I still have no clue what happened, right? So just with those brothers to the show, like, hey, um, call my friend, hey, um, you're fired. I was like, why? She's like, you're fired. And I was like, I still don't know till this day. Yeah, it's it kind of very rude, so it still stings. Um, but no, after that, I was like, okay, I guess it's time to you know sink or swim by my own fins. Mm-hmm. Your idea for your business, your marketing agency, how does your marketing agency now tie into the was it like to party company? Because I feel like although they're such different companies, they're they're similar in a way. You can network while you're partying and, you know, bring that to your marketing agency. So just want to tell us a little bit about um, both of those businesses and their connection. Yeah, it actually feeds the other way, right? Um, so I had... Um, with my marketing agency, I first started out just like it, as a generic marketing agency, right? It used to be called unfiltered marketing, 
right? Or of course, we're like, we gave you the real market. Said, but no, builder. Ha <laughs> ha! I thought that was smart. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we worked on that for like half a year. And then I had a call with again this friend from like that I mentioned way previously, and we've been friends for like eleven years. And he goes, and so but at this point, he um he already had a seven-figure marketing agency right um he got like a 2.5 million dollar deal from like a big like investor or something like that right so obviously we talk and you no know, talk shop and he was like why are you um why do people hire you and i was like they hire me for me actually i'm the sole reason like if i went here none of my clients will be right i'm the reason why people are here right because of like and he was like why not just brand everything around yourself Mm -hmm. right um that's your company selling points you so like you have like amazing employees you you're the reason why people um come to you and that's when um he was like brand around yourself make yourself a brand and that's when i thought about it for a couple of days and that's when grow with chihu was born right he was one who inspired doing you know grow with chihu now after that i just really got into whatever I enjoyed doing, branding myself in that space, mm -hmm. right? And then um, in 2019, no, 2020, COVID hits, okay? Um, I lost like, we, most of my clients cut their budget, we we're down like 40%, right? But mm -hmm. guess what, but everything was closed. So it was like, I, I found myself in a place where I didn't, everything was closed. I was comfortab living comfortably, because I still had like a back of clients who are still coming in, right? Mm -hmm. And I have all this extra um, capital sitting around, right? So I decided that um, I would start out to a couple parties, right? You know, um, we, so we threw a couple of parties during COVID because there was nothing else we were to do, right? Mm -hmm. And that's then after four or five months of doing this, I decided to brand it as its own thing, right? And you know, I can remember people would always message me to this people DM, hey, you know, invite me on to what's like party with Chiho, you know, invite <laughs> me on to what's like party with Chiho. And that was a term that always kept coming up, right? And then someone mentioned, someone was like, dude, like you really know how to throw a good party. I remember it was my end of summer party of 2020. Um, we back then we had like a mansion which we let down sold because it's too expensive, um, and we threw like a really really huge party. First, like no one, everyone there said they had never seen parties a party like that. Okay, we had like yeah. mermaids, we had like choir dancers, we had a DJ. It was a proper show. It's like Circus Delay meets you know Tampa Pops, and so that's when what's like party kind of came about, and then I realized we could build a brand out of that. For the, so the next the initial idea was to you know there are a lot of young entrepreneurs like me who have a lot of capital and the problem that most people who become entrepreneurs like me like we have a couple of years like three four years where we just grinded and focused on building our craft but we didn't really do anything and same with me you know the first like you no know, from 2016 through like 2020 I didn't go out I didn't do anything okay I just focused on building my business and now it's built I have a lot of capital what to do with that i want to have some fun i want to enjoy my 20s so like mm -hmm. i will show people young like me how to enjoy their hard earned cup down and we're like we'll show them what it's like to party in different cities around the world and that's kind of so right now it's still kind of a passion project so pretty much the marketing agency funds what it's like to party and all the content and all that because we are more trying to like you know build a brand out of that and we have this market agency that's you know it's doing very well and it's kind of you no know, i wanted to use that extra capital to do something i was actually passionate about mm -hmm. and i'm passionate about making other people have fun i love that grow with um chihu party with chihu like that is amazing and um i love that story also i think you could you know relate to a lot of young business entrepreneurs who you know are starting their own businesses and you know maybe they're putting too much time into um their business and don't know how to enjoy themselves so i think that um your two businesses do make sense and do really go together
Yes. Well, what would you say maybe like the biggest challenges that you faced at the start of your career? Well, this is a sore topic. <laughs> um, this is a sore topic. Um, being young was always, you know, kind of, it's hard to um, let people take you um, seriously, right? Obviously now, most people who interact with me business-wise take me seriously just because of my, my sheer track record. I'm like, I'm like, this is what I've done for people, right? I, I'm no longer trying to win people's business over. It's not people trying to win my time over and I no longer have to like, you know, dance for them. You know what I mean? I don't need to take any clients. I can just say no. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, but because I was young and I know, you know, I need mean, that clients keep the lights on. You know what I mean, I'm like, if I don't get these clients, I'm not going to pay, pay rent. You know what I mean, like, like, 29, like 2018, 2019, I can remember I was, it's like, you know, maybe spending $25 on food for the whole week, right? I was working like 100 hours. So back then, so it was just, you know, trying to convince people, you know, that I knew my stuff. And also, um, I started my business, you know, in Florida, right? With a name like Chihu. Um, it was very hard to get people to um, get them through the door. Um, it was very hard to know. Like, plus, I have an accent, right? Like, I once, like, this was, um, I, I still remember the client, the, their name, the name of the business. Obviously, I won't say it. Um, but we had, like, a Zoom call. One of my clients had referred me to them because my clients had to get some lots of business. They're like, hey, how are you getting on this business? And they're like, um, this is who is helping me, right? So I helped in a Zoom call. We talk, we talk about business, we talk shop, blah, 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 blah. I could really help them. And then, you know, Zoom call ended, but they forgot to hang up. Mm. And they were making full of accents, making really racist jokes, right? So the whole, like, you no, know, that has always been something I had to deal with initially, mm -hmm. right? Because I felt like I had to make people so much money for them to overlook the fact that I was young and the color of my skin mm -hmm. and um, just, you know, my ethnicity and, ethnicity and all that, right? And having, like, situations where I could literally hear them saying it was really very... Um, jarring and scarring and obviously when you go to networking events a lot of people don't walk up to you to you know ask for your information you always have to like, up to people versus you other people where people are actually actively trying to network them you know um so that's actually now i don't do networking events just because you know at networking events people don't know anything about me right so i don't like to deal with that um, situation of feeling um left out um that's in rooms that I more than qualified to be in. So that was one of my biggest um, challenges when I first started out. Yeah, I can honestly completely relate to you. Obviously, my name isn't common either. And I feel like there is such like something we go through with uncommon names that like other people sometimes can't relate to. Like when you first go into your classroom and everyone plays like the name game on the first day, like I get nervous sometimes where like, someone named like Mike wouldn't, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So it is like something interesting that most people wouldn't think about. Yes, like, like, no, precisely. And no, um, I, I, I'm, 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 my personality does not lend well to, you know, having kind of a unique name mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, like, like, for example, um, you guys got my name right first, first try, right? Straight up ahead. I honestly, deep down, to not understand how anyone can pronounce my name wrong. I'm like, I always go, it's two syllables. It's she and who? <laughs> you're an adult. How can't you? I'm like, you're an adult. How is it? I, I, I honestly, deep down, do not understand how someone can pronounce it wrong unless they're just not thinking or they're trying to annoy me. <laughs> it's, two, it's two syllables. It's she and who? Who sounds you know? <laughs> so right. um, it, it always puts me off on the wrong foot for like, they like look at something, they just, instead of trying for us, they just like make weird sounds. And I'm like, okay, I'm never gonna do business with you. Yeah. Um, to transition to that, what are some of your biggest accomplishments that you've had over your career? Um, they, they, these are like different in some sense, right? Um, like last year we had a really good year. You know what I mean? Um, in terms of the you know, revenue gener generated for clients, you know, um, businesses were scaled. We just had like a really, really um, good year um, business wise. And it really gave me the confidence to, like, this was the first year where I actually felt like, okay, this isn't like going away. 
Now, I mean, I always had that back in my day, oh, maybe, you know, a couple of bad clients, a couple of bad months. But well, now I'm like, after last year, I can always use those resources to leverage myself into whatever space I want to um, mm-hmm. go in. So last year, in terms of, that was, in terms of growth, that's my accomplishments. But the problem is with growth with Chihu, I always knew I was good at that, right? What it's like to party is what I struggle with. So even though the accomplishments there might not be as big or as shiny or as rare, it feels better to me, mm-hmm. right? Because it's um, it's me trying the space. I'm not like I'm naturally an introvert. People don't know this, but I'm naturally extremely introverted. Like anyone who knew me growing up, will have no has no idea how I run a party business. How I'm, like my social media would have you think that you know I'm this. But people who know me personally know that ninety percent of the time I'm stuck in my office from my computer. Mm-hmm. Is that time on the weekend? I see on Instagram, okay? Remember, all the content you see out there, I curate that. So you only see the parts of me that are fun, bubbly, all that. I'm not that um, <laughs> entertaining in, um, in reality. So I went to a concert, um, Reggae Rise Up in St. Pete's um, two, two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. And um, a friend of mine invited me backstage to come into one of the artists, Mali, um, with Revolution. And um, I woke up and it's like, hey, this is Chihu. And the artist, he was the headliner of the show. Right? This is the basic guitar of the headline. And he goes, you're Chihu? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I've heard a lot about you. Mm-hmm. And one, that made me look really cool in front of all my friends. <laughs> that this headliner of the show had heard about me before. He, this was, I obviously, had, I, I, I had listened to his music, but he had heard about me. I still don't know how, right? But he had heard about me, and I was like, oh, <laughs> you are? He's like, yeah, come back to my tour bus. You know, let's go have some drinks. I went, I went back to join the band. I know I went to their tour bus. It was, it was a very, I, it was, it was, it's probably one of the most proud moments of my life, mm-hmm. right? One of those is where I'm going to tell my kids, I'm like, yeah, I want them, I want them, you know. And the artist, it's like, no, let's say you're a big rap fan, and you know, you go, go like a two chase concert and two chase is like oh i know you i've heard about you and you're like you me um i had a show last year with um migo story lanes jack Harlow for super bowl mm-hmm. and we kind of planned that show in like three weeks so that for me was also very big it really um because normally i struggle managing people mm-hmm. and so it's really um it was a huge accomplishment that they would pull that up and with what's like party, we sold out about we sold out six shows um, last year. So, but it's, it's, it's only sort of like only like 400 people, 500 people, which is small. These are very small shows, mm-hmm. right? But it's not something I thought I would ever like. What's like party? We've been doing it for like two years now. It's not something I thought I'll be able to do that fast. And so the skill sets, like I struggle with it. I get a lot of stress. Like I've never gotten that much stress from my marketing agency. Right, but it stresses me out and it just makes me feel like um, I'm doing something hard. So it's important. Yeah, that's that's incredible, definitely. And I love those accomplishments, obviously. Uh, one more question that I like to ask, then I'm going to hand off to Christian. Um, what is one piece of advice that you'd give to someone that's starting their own business? Uh, <laughs> uh, um, no, I know the answer to this one. Oh, good. This is one piece of advice I always give. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Do it. It sucks. <laughs> like it's like I like it's very 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 hard. <laughs> okay, and um, and if that advice stops you from doing it, then you shouldn't have done it. Then you then you, then it's not for you, right? So my advice is always don't do it. You know, people glamorize it, right? But it's hard. But especially, especially if you're trying to do it right. Mm-hmm. Okay, but especially if you're trying to do it right. If you're trying to, try to make a quick buck, go do whatever you want, okay? I have a lot of clients who come in and come out, they start a business, try to make a quick buck. They're not really invested, okay? If you're trying to do it right, it's going to be very hard, especially if you're young and you're not starting with a lot of capital, right? You know, you're going to have, I had like, like the weeks I worked 100 hours. That's insane. That's almost 18 hour days every day. <laughs> No, but I had no employees and I had to, I had to, you know, pay rent. I had to get food. I had no, it's very, very, 
very hard. And if you're just trying to make money, it's a lot easier to go learn a new skill and get a higher paying job. And like I said, the easiest way to make six figures is go do a six month coding program, get them Python, get a six figure job. Way easier ways to make money than starting your own business. Mm -hmm. So unless you know you're the kind of person who like, like, I can't do anything else, like this is what I want to do, don't start your own business. It's 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 not fun. And I, I actually, I think that's a very interesting response because most people will be like, oh, do this, do that. But your response is a completely different direction because you see the goal in mind because you understand it from a perspective of someone who has had their own business, but also has worked for other people. And if you're doing your business, and by the way, I want to go back to a couple of things that you mentioned because it's also some of the things I talk about and the fact that, for example, turning your passions into profits. So for example, for you, your marketing company, uh, bringing in your profits and then funneling that into your party company, which is your passion in terms makes it feel like you're not working. And actually, I love that because that statement itself, turn your passions into profits. I say that over and over and over again. Um, but I do want to pivot to um, a couple just final questions just to provide the audience with as much value as possible. And then we're going to wrap up um, the podcast for today. Um, I just wanted to ask, what are some methods that you use to promote your business? Obviously, as a digital marketing expert, I'm sure you're all over the digital space. Um, but let's say someone that's, let's say, not very well versed in social media. What should they do to actually grow their business? I'm going to sound like Gary V here, but content, content, content. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the easiest way to... Um, kind of grow an audience is just really good content, mm -hmm. right? And not just good at content, authentic. Like I just, I said this, I have said this like two years, okay? Um, I like to say there are three tenants of, you know, four tenants of kind of um, social media um, landscape, and it's consistency, relevance, authenticity, and planning. If you don't follow those rules, everything you post is going to be crap because it spells out C-R-A-P, crap, right? So you have to be consistent with your content, right? It has to be relevant to your audience and it has to be authentic because there's a lot of people who just try out content out there, right? And no one's going to engage because it's not authentic to who you are. Like that's why every business I do, it represents a part of who I am as a person, right? I love growing businesses, grow with Chino. I love to have fun. What's next party? Yeah, it's a great anchor, right? Right? Um, so it's very authentic to who I am. And everything is planned, okay? I call the month, you know, monthly calendars. It's not just a fluke, because the problem is when people try to make content, is they're like, oh, what am I going to make today? What do I have to make, make tomorrow? Okay? But if you plan your month out in advance, you can do like, and I'm sure you guys do this, obviously, you guys have to make amazing content consistently. Right? Thank and you. Content, right? So you plan it out. So um, that's kind of what I would say. Mm. And just you know, having your content be very, because first you have to make great content. And then next step is getting that content in front of the right audience, right? But you want to make sure when you get in front of the right audience, you have something to show them. You know what I mean? Like if you're just like you know, a movie trailer, right? If you have a great trailer, but movies, movies not good, people are not going to come watch part two of that movie, right? So you no know, great content would be the very first foundation um, that I would recommend consistently. I love that, man. What a crazy story. Like grew up in Nigeria, went to boarding school, moved to the United States at 16, skipped a couple grades. So, I mean, obviously with skipping a couple grades, you killed it at school, growing your YouTube channel, you killed it in YouTube, you killed it on your marketing company and you're doing so well with your party and yacht company. So what, what, a, what a crazy story, man. And I love how um, you pivoted and you took your audience with a smaller video game and took it to a bigger uh, video game. So for example, going from um, an initial game to a game maybe like Call of Duty or something like that, that alone is a very important skill um, and kind of like shows that you are able to influence people um, to kind of like be around you. And that's also, I mean, obviously when it comes to video games, some people have built careers off of that, but you were able to take that skill and move it to your marketing company. I think that is one huge lesson for people to take. And then obviously, um, you moved into the social media space with growing pages and whatnot. 
Uh, and obviously here's where you started to feel the big setbacks like PayPal chargebacks, this and that. And I'm going to get into a statement here that I have written down um, that I think describes you perfectly. Um, and also when it comes to like jobs, your reasoning kind of behind um, not wanting to be in a job was just the fact that one, you didn't like to be an employee and you felt like you weren't the right employee, but also like the fact that you were fired for no reason made you want to feel never vulnerable to something like that again, which in yeah. terms kind of forced you to start your own business. So it's not like you started your own business because you just wanted to be a boss or something like that. It's it's because because like the world around you made you to be a person that is in a position like that. And in terms, you're able to understand your team members and treat them with the level of respect that you wish you had prior. And obviously you were able to take that agency and brand yourself around it, which also is a, yet another amazing skill to have. Obviously self branding is huge nowadays. Personal brand is what people try to do like every single day um, to grow their business. And you were able to do that successfully. So I think people could definitely go and even follow back your steps and recreate kind of what you did with your agency in order for them to be able to brand themselves with their company, obviously, um, which takes you back to the, like the party company, which basically just says, follow what you're good at. And I think that's a huge lesson. People are always trying to figure out what is the next thing I should do. Why don't you just live your life and focus on what you're good at? I love that concept there. Right. So, and I want to kind of like highlight the main lesson. I feel like I learned from you today. It's, uh, turn your setbacks into your superpower. You said, oh, they're gonna, they, they don't like my name or they don't like my accent. Guess what? That's my brand now. Yep. I love that. That is super, super powerful. And honestly, man, I know we just met, but I'm super proud of you for the accomplishments that you've made. And I look forward to seeing you again, hopefully um, in another like situation. Maybe, maybe we get invited to one of your parties or something. Um, <laughs> well, 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 um, Christian, if you keep talking like that, um, I mean, whenever I get married, I would like you to give the best one speech. <laughs> I'm like, can he just describe me all the time? <laughs> He's good at that. <laughs> no, I love that, man. And, and, and I appreciate that. Um, but I, I do want to say thank you for being on the podcast with us today. We do have to cut this short um, for the time being. But we definitely, definitely want to have you again because I feel like we only like got the tip of the iceberg. I feel there's so much more to talk about with you. And again, I just want to say thank you for being here. I just wanted to ask you, how can someone reach out to you if they wanted to work with you or uh, maybe get on a yacht or have a good party? I don't know. <laughs> um, if you want to get in touch with me um, personally, it's Grow with Chihu on you know, Instagram. Um, you no. Know, if you want to get in touch with the party business, it's what is like to party on Instagram, what's it like to party on Facebook, what's it like to party.com. And um, for the agencies, you no know, GWC Marcus Agency, but pretty much you no, know, what's it like to party wherever you will get in touch um, with me or my team. But me personally, grow with Chihu um, on Instagram, grow with Chihu.com. No, very easy to remember. Grow with Chihu, what's it like to party? Google it. I love that, man. And again, thank you so much for being on the podcast with us today. Um, if you guys learned something in this podcast, feel free to comment. Let us know. Go follow my man, Chihu. Definitely show him some love. He provided you guys with tons and tons of value today. And I think, again, there's way more to learn from there. So if you guys want to do that, obviously go follow him. And if you're interested in being part of our podcast family, if you want to hop on, share your story, provide some value to others, uh, make sure to also uh, DM Naja or email her at najaagentechmarketing.com. And obviously, again, you guys know how to reach out to us. Uh, you can catch us on YouTube, Instagram, uh, whatever Pinterest nowadays as well, um, at Gentech Marketing, of course. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.